Hi, and welcome to another video in the Symphony of the New Fire series. My name is Bob Greenier, and I'm a volunteer for the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Today I'd like to talk to you about keeping the instruments in tune. Specifically, it's about preparing the fuel. Now, there's been a lot of questions about the Lugano report. How, if there was this big signal when the reaction starts, would you be able to have the experiment not create that big signal? Well, I'm going to put forward something based on our own experimental data and that of at least one other researcher, and that will formulate uh, my hypothesis for how you can prepare the fuel uh, such that it fits with what was observed by attendees at the Lugano uh, experiment, and also uh, that fits uh, um, the overall pattern of information. I want you to draw your attention to a very, very important moment in our history. This was, this was in uh, Minnesota at the beginning of last year. And uh, we were doing an experiment we called BANG eventually. Essentially, we had silicon carbide element that failed because the reactor inside, which was our first attempt to heat up the Rossi formula or something similar, lithium aluminum hydride and, and uh, uh, nickel, in a, an aluminum tube, it blew up and it blew the silicon carbide element apart. So you can see it here, these are the silicon carbide parts, uh, this was the outer ceramic sheath, and in the center here we can see these white chips which were part of the aluminum tube um, that formed the, the outer part of the reactor structure. And then this rod here is in fact uh, a sintered rod of uh, nickel, that has been coated and has taken on this kind of red-brown appearance. And what actually happened was, this, this photo was taken about 17 minutes, I think, after the, the explosion. Uh, around there, uh, that might be wrong, but around there. And it had this kind of red hue to it. And what happened was, over the, uh, the subsequent 24 hours, it kind of went brown, well, the next time it was looked at by Ryan. So it went from red to brown. We hypothesized at the time that maybe this was to do with phosphorus or, or, or whatever. But actually, what I now think is that it's due, due to the lithium that's uh, in there uh, being exposed to nitrogen in the air and going to lithium nitride. And that uh, starts off ready and then goes brown. And it's, it's a slow process, not that slow, you can see it happen in front of your eyes almost. But um, uh, that's probably what went on there. So we then sent that off to Edwin Storms at uh, Kiva Labs. And he came back with this beautiful SEM image, which taught us so much. Effectively, we had frozen the experiment in time. And uh, we got back this beautiful image, and uh, if I zoom into the image, you'll see that it's, it looks like it's all centered together, and then it's kind of got this weighted material to the surface. And what we discovered was that this was lithium, aluminium, well, we couldn't see the lithium because of SEM, but anyway, lithium, aluminium, and uh, in there, there was a percentage of uh, dissolved nickel. So that's coating the whole surface, and the nickel is somewhere underneath that, uh, and you can imagine that's forming the, the, the basis of the structure. So what does this look when you, you take a kind of schematic of it? So I drew this little picture here, sorry, it's not the best in the world. And uh, what we have is our sintered nickel grains here, these are the sintering points. Uh, don't ask me what those are, that's the end of the brush stroke. Um, sintered nickel grains, and then over here on the outside we have lithium hydride, uh, plus aluminium, plus uh, nickel in, uh, in the lithium and aluminium uh, uh, kind of like a solution that's frozen onto the surface of the nickel. So it's effectively encapsulating uh, the nickel. So that is the only other experimental uh, evidence I want to draw your attention to. There is one other key piece of evidence. Now, I tried to hint that people should go out there and look for it. Well, when we started this process of rolling out the information, uh, I asked people to go to our Gamma blog from 2013 and really read it and try, try and digest all the information. And there's an image on there that always struck me as a little odd. And, and what it is, is it's an image that's 
where someone has derived a, a, a property of what's going on in the reaction. Uh, but no one's really asked the question, why is he doing that now? I'll show you the image. So this is an image from a nickel rod from a former Piantelli Picardi Piantelli experiment. And it's sitting in a cloud chamber, and we've got a track here, uh, which is deflecting off some sort of a nucleus of a, a gas in the cloud chamber. Uh, and this ostensibly is a proton, and the distance uh, gives you the energy. Um, and so Piantelli tells us that he uh, uh, determines the protons that are coming out as part of the two branches of the reaction. Uh, it, it's coming out from a, this rod. Hold on a minute. This isn't in the experiment, is it? I mean, this is, this is the experiment's finished. He's taking out the rod, and at some time later, he's putting it into this cloud chamber, and you're seeing this effect. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that whatever has happened to this rod is kind of like metastable, it's like it, it stays in a kind of semi-activated state. Well, if it's firing out lithium, sorry, if it's firing out protons uh, like this, and we prepared our uh, material here so that this was, the nickel was activated and it was firing out protons, would we get really worried that you're going to get some interactions between the protons and the, the lithium that's surrounding this? Uh, I mean, it would worry me, right? I mean, would it worry you? I don't know. But anyway, what we're seeing here is that these protons are coming out, uh, and this is just nickel rod. I mean, it's not got the lithium on the top, right? So, um, I want to draw your attention to this piece of research from uh, 2009, I think it is. Uh, and it's done on uh, liquid plasmas uh, for, with uh, lithium and protons. Okay, so effectively a kind of lithium hydride solution. Yeah? And if I zoom into the key point here, it's saying, uh, if we go, where is it? Here. Um, this section here. I'll include links to these documents in the, uh, uh, the uh, description of the video, and there'll also be uh, this PowerPoint presentation as a PDF that you can download. So, it's saying the deduced screening potential for the liquid lithium is about 500 eV larger than for the solid. The difference is attributable to the effect of liquefied Li plus ions. It is concluded that the ionic screening is much stronger than the electronic screening in low temperature dense plasmas. Okay, so maybe you have a situation where you can prepare your nickel, it goes into a metastable state, and then, subsequent to that, you, you have a, a protective layer over the surface. Now, we saw it as a, a lithium uh, nitride, but actually the lithium we used in Glowstick 5.2, that was passivated lithium, and that comes from a company called Nanoshell. Here we are, Nanoshell. And what they're doing to that is they are CO2 stabilizing passive, passivate, uh, to passivate the lithium. And it, it ends up looking like a white powder, like this. You see this white powder here. And uh, this is off our friends at lookingforheat.com. And uh, uh, essentially, that is the material that we put in a part of this uh, uh, that we got from Nanoshell. And we put it into, well, actually, we got it from Brian uh, Alberston, Vyman. Barbara and Alison uh, from Nanoshell, and he it, it, it lost the CO2 pacification because we processed it in the early part of the experiment deliberately to remove that pacification. Okay, so imagine what we've got. We can do then is like once we've sinted our nipples and we activated them by going past the signal. So we know this, the, the, the material is activated. Once that, once that signal's died down, bring the temperature down. We have our uh, lithium hydride, aluminium, and nickel complex all the way around here. And that is protecting the nickel surface from further oxidation. 
Okay? And then protecting the lithium, we can CO2 pacify it. Okay? So we have uh, a, a, like, a protection of the nickel and a protection of the fuel, the, 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 the hydrogen storage material uh, around the, the nickel zincid grains. And what this does is it gives you a powder that, say, Rossi could turn up to uh, Lugano in southern Switzerland in an envelope. And as Axel, Axel says, it looks like it's already pre-processed. Well, I think it was. And I think it was pre-processed in a similar method to this. You've got the nickel into a metastable state where it's already gone through the, what I would call, um, the big transition. And then you can put it into the reactor, and with the tungsten shielding, you don't see any radiation during the run. Particularly not if you're keeping it at fixed input powers rather than cycling it. And that, my dear friends, is why I think you did not see any radiation in the garden. It's also how you would be able to process your nickel such that you would be able to uh, uh, process, process it in a large bag, batch and then distribute it without any uh, of the major problems associated with the individual chemicals and the, the initial terminal uh, fails. So essentially what we are doing is pre-processing the nickel as per the MFMP recipe or a simplified version to be determined. You add the lithium hydride and pacified lithium and then you kind of mix it and put it in an argon bag, mix it, put it into the reactor and then you process it uh, by running the experiment as per the MFMP recipe, a uh, simplified version to be decided at some point until you see the signal. And then you, at some point, you cool, at some point during the cool down, you replace the H2 atmosphere with CO2 uh, to passivate. These things need to be worked out, but essentially that's the kind of process you would do to pre-process your fuel. If you'd like to help Ryan in Minnesota and the team at Hub run an experiment, then we have a new uh, PayPal address in the donation uh, addresses in the description. And that is for the uh, non-profit organization. Uh, if you can donate to that, then that is the fund for the, for the HUG uh, experiment. Please help us. Thank you for all those that have helped us to date. And I'll see you in the next video.